There are almost a million heart attacks per year in the United States. About half are fatal. Eddie Floyd had a heart attack a couple of years ago. He's the owner of the Bark and Purr Pet Center in Austin. I had a very, very strong pain from armpit to armpit. And so I knew what it was. There wasn't any doubt what it was. It was extremely painful. He did develop the typical chest pain, came in, treated in the typical way, which was to open his artery and put a stent in, and then use all the usual medications that we would do. The doctor came in and asked me if I wanted to participate in a study uh, for adult stem cells that came from people's bone marrow. And within 10 days in that phase of the trial, he received either the stem cells or, or placebo. We know in his case that he got stem cells. You know, I went home from the hospital and went back to living my life, except for going in frequently for checkups. <laughs> the typical heart attack occurs when an artery to the heart gets blocked. Without blood, that part of the heart dies, leaving it scarred and weaker, reducing its pumping power. Then we look at an overall heart function assay where we talk about the ejection fraction, which is the percentage of blood that's pumped out each time the heart squeezes, and that ejection fraction improves in people that respond. So three different parameters really, the size of the scar, the activity of the muscle, and the overall strength of the heart. They did not cause any kind of rejection, so I didn't have to have any rejection, preventing medicine or anything like that. They were just uh, generic stem cells that became heart. Within the first seven days after a heart attack, the heart cells that are dying are emitting uh, homing signals, the, a beacon that says, I need help, and the stem cells are able to respond to that. And we do that to a small amount anyway as, uh, when we're trying to repair our own heart attack. But in this case, we're giving patients millions of stem cells that can recognize that homing signal and travel through the veins, through the lungs, and then make it all the way to the heart. And we know that this works. They become myoblasts and then myocytes, and they are, have been shown to actually be truly functioning heart muscle at that point. And it has apparently uh, regenerated the muscle that died uh, during my heart attack. He was one of them that had complete resolution of the heart attack. You couldn't see any evidence of damage when it was over with and he had normal heart function so he did have a pretty dramatic response. There really isn't anything that I can't do because of my heart that I'm aware of. There are a few things I can't do because of my belly but there are not many things that I can't do because of my heart. In this study the stem cells are harvested from healthy adults between 18 and 30. All the donors can become universal donors because the cells are processed to remove elements that cause rejection. The heart attack victim just gets the next cartridge given in an IV. This is an incredible breakthrough. In most transplants, they take great care to avoid rejection. But here, there's no need for DNA matching or anti-rejection drugs. Over a thousand patients have received these type of stem cells, these allogeneic mesenchymal stem cells from healthy volunteers. There were studies done for Crohn's disease and graft versus host disease and a number of other disease states. in the heart study that was done in phase one, there were 53 patients in that. And then this phase two study will have 220 patients. And we're dosing the second patient today. The Texas legislature is considering pro-life bills, Senate Bill 73 and House Bill 2379, to promote ethical, life-saving adult stem cell research and treatments. As Texans, we have a choice. We can support adult stem cell research, which has proven to help many like Eddie and successfully treated thousands more with over 70 other medical conditions. Or we can fund embryonic stem cell research, which requires the destruction of human embryos and is yet to cure any disease. Embryonic research is the choice of California, spending $3 billion. Their first goal is to restore function for one disease in the next 10 years. Research has been ongoing for more than a decade with embryonic stem cells, which has the dangerous side effect of frequently causing tumors in lab animals. Contrast that to adult stem cell research where doctors continue to find positive effects on even more diseases. A lot of the patients were smokers and had chronic bronchitis or emphysema and it actually healed some of that process. And, um, so over time, lung function improved in the people who got cells, whereas it didn't improve in the placebo patients. So, so now the company's actually started a whole other 
round of studies looking at treating emphysema with it. Please help put patients first in Texas. Visit TexasAllianceForLife.org and learn how you can encourage your state senator and representative to support Senate Bill 73 and House Bill 2379. Or call them today through the Capitol switchboard at 512-463-4630.